Yeah, that's a tough one because, you know, this is not just an economic change. I mean, this has been happening the last few years, but I think the current economy, as you had pointed out, really is making it more difficult to give that leeway to say, okay, yeah, take the two years, take, take the, you know, the time to build, you know, the traction and then figure out monetization later. Um, but I do know, you know, even in the last like three, four years, I know of a lot of startups who have gotten funding and it's like, we really don't know how we're going to make money. We just are going to go get millions of people. And then there's going to be this giant question mark. And eventually we'll just have this massive exit at the end. It's a weird environment. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird environment though. Right. And I think a lot has changed, um, over this time. And it's interesting that you advise that, you know, now it's really about the business model. So when you're talking to people, you know, you've got kind of a dual role as investor and advisor. Are there things that you're telling your uh, the people you're advising right now about how to kind of weather the current economic you know, storm or get to that Series A? Um, you know, are there certain things that are key? Yeah, I actually want to go back to kind of just talking about open source model and open core model in general. Just go back to your like original sure. point. I think it's. I, I almost sometimes feel like companies and, and founders over rotate so much where it's like open source and open core is like the model that to like to like build a business now. And I almost wonder, like I sometimes just hear founders of like, oh, I'm just going to open source this to get traction. And I almost feel like sometimes we forgot that the point of what open source kind of means, like the ethos around open source and then why you open source. So that's kind of one point, which I would love to hear your opinions. And two, I almost now feel that like, they're giving everything for free, right? Like I, like I, almost, I talked to this company, right? That had a massive adoption in the open source and then gave the project to the CNCF and, but, and they don't have a monetization strategy. And, but they, so then I'm like, well, like what's the business now, right? But we're like, well, we want to prove to the community that we believe in open source, but then it's like, but then you have nothing to sell. Yeah, I think that that is a really common thing. You know, um, unfortunately, People have taken open source and the success of many companies, whether it's Hashi or, or other companies that have done this, and they've just said, we want to copy that. And so yeah. slapping open in front of something and be like, oh, open source, yay. Um, they think that if they build it, the money will eventually come, right? And mm -hmm. it, it's something that I've seen over and over again. And honestly, the, the, the tech graveyard is filled with companies that have followed that kind of model, unfortunately, because they haven't thought about business. And um, when I talk to founders and, you know, executives, I, I try to always focus on the why. why. Why are you doing this? What's the purpose? What's your goal? You know, if, if your goal is to change the world, then, you know, hey, as a not-for-profit, as a foundation-driven project, maybe that's the goal, right? You know, but that's not a business. If your goal is to have a big exit, it's to, you know, be financially secure, it's to, you know, elevate the the the, the level of uh, standard of living for your employees, all of those great things, but they're all different goals and how you go about achieving them are, are, are vastly different. And yeah, you definitely have to think through that model. Um, Avi, as a founder, what do you think? <laughs> oh, um... You're laughing. <laughs> you would smile the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's... It's very tempting to have this to have this thinking of well yeah you know like the first I need to get lots of adoption and then I'll worry about these things later because so much will happen between there and now I can't possibly actually predict you know how this is going to play out. Um, there's also just you know a lot of the survivorship bias thing too. Like a lot of very successful companies did actually just fall into their business model and didn't really think about it up front. And so it's like well if that worked for them it might work for me also. Um, I would be very interested if we had like I don't know if the data set exists you know for how intentional was this company about their business model? How, how many times did they pivot that business model over time? And what, is that, um, what does that look like when it comes to the success rate of it? Um, but I think that in general, being very intentional when building a business is just generally a good recipe because it makes you think more deeply about what you're doing. And like, you know, the, the thing that comes to mind with that is like, the YC application is very long, but it's also something that they say is like, well, this is just good for you to think through anyway. And like, it's a fairly reasonable justification that like, yeah, you should, you should do this even if you're not applying to YC when you're starting a business, because it makes you think through this stuff. So 
that's not very conclusive to the question, but it's just like meandering thoughts about it that like, it's not, I think being intentional is just generally good. Is it a, is it a requirement for success? Probably not, but should you do it? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. it's, uh, I, I got into a LinkedIn debate. It was like 11 PM at night. And I'm like, why am I checking LinkedIn at 11 PM at night? But it was someone had, someone was arguing that you should think about your monetization strategy from the beginning and 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 I, I was just saying, I'm like, okay, that's so easy in hindsight, right? Like I was saying so the, the biggest competitors to HashiCorp were, was HashiCorp's own open source projects, right? Like yeah. our biggest competitor to Terraform Enterprise was Terraform. Our biggest competitor to Vault Enterprise was Vault, right? And so then he was like, well, then you guys were like, weren't thoughtful about how you thought about like monetization strategy. And I was like, well, I mean, we had a $15 billion exit. So I like, I, it's not like we messed up, but I'm just saying, right. It's like, you know, for people have never built companies and are, are in it. Right. When you're just like, there's so much momentum and pressure and like, you know, cause when you have an open source project and like a platform or, or some type of like paid version, like you're building two separate pro, I don't know. There's just, there's so much to think about, but like, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, one of the interesting things that you mentioned there was, you know, the, the the point about, you know, oh, yeah, it's the hindsight. Right. And there's so much hindsight in this. It's not funny where people are always second guessing. And, oh, yeah, if you would have just done this, you would have been better off. But I think one of the, the, the critical things that people miss on the open source side is um, one million users does not mean one million customers. Right. One million users means potentially, let's say, I don't know, 10,000 customers or a thousand customers. Who knows how many? Um, because if you are intentional or you do think about how you're going to monetize this or commercialize this in the future, what you're going to do is find the niche of people who are willing to pay. And almost every open source company that I've worked with, that I've talked with, that I've you know known, their competition is always themselves, right? Because, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's, that's just the way that open source is. There's, like I said, a million people, 900,000 will use your free version. You have to focus on the, you know, the, the ones that will pay and be very specific on what they'll pay for. And that's always a trick, right? Is what are those features? What should be reserved? What shouldn't be? And, you know, there are lots of answers, but it requires some research and some thought and talking to people. I know like a lot of technical people hate to talk with folks, people out there talk with folks like it's OK. Yeah. You know, talk with your users, you know, figure this out. Um, talk with potential, you know, uh, folks out there because it's a big miss. Yeah. That's such a great point. Yeah. Again, it goes back to my original, like from the early days, set up like a proper like user feedback program. Mm -hmm. absolutely and just, and just and know those first 200 300 people intimately 